What's going on, rock stars? Welcome to the channel. And I hate to have to do a video like this uh, for my audience, but it's important that you guys stay up to date on the news of this country, the economy. It's important for small business owners and resellers. And unfortunately, a ton of bad financial information came out today about the state of this country, the United States. If you're not in the United States, this may not apply to you, but it regards three things. So total credit card debt uh, that this country is carrying, auto loan rates and delinquencies, and mortgage foreclosures and interest rates and delinquencies. So all three of these bad things are way up in this country at all-time highs or nearing all-time highs and at record percentage increases. Since pandemic, pre-pandemic times, and even as far back as 1994, before the last housing market crash, we are in a position right now in what we would call a recession, even though some people won't define it as that. It definitely is recessionist. And we, as an economy, as a country, are in a bad, bad place with money, with a lot of things. And I'm going to add one more caveat. You might see some stories about Black Friday being record sales, be it online or in the stores, and that's true. However, as you're going to see in what I'm going to show you in just a second, part of the reason that those sales were at all-time highs is because people spent credit card money at all-time highs. So it means that people spent money that they either don't have or that they're going to try to pay off later, and who knows if they're going to be able to pay it off later. And because interest rates on credit cards are at all-time highs, they're going to spend more money for those items than they would have spent normally paying for it in cash or a debit card versus a credit card. All of these things combined, why am I making this video? They are scary, they are terrifying. I'm not here to fear monger anyone, but I am here to tell you the facts as they stand and for you to be ready to make good decisions, to keep your money, to spend your money wisely, to invest in your business wisely, and to do everything you can to generate as much momentum and profit and sales as you possibly can to keep yourself going through these rough times. When will interest rates drop? When will prices drop? When will inflation drop? When will things get better? We don't know. Could it be a year from now because of an election? Could it be two years from now after the next president or whoever's in office decides to help it out and it takes time to get there? Six months, nine months, a year? All of these are unanswered questions that we have. I don't know the answer to that. I wish I could tell you. If I did and had a crystal ball, None of us would have to worry about anything because we would know what to do and when to do it. With that said, I'm going to take you over and show you these stories, and then I will leave the rest up to you guys to make the decisions, how you handle your business, how you handle your finances, your personal, your business, all these things aside, uh, I'm just here to give you the facts and the information. And also, you can leave me comments on what you feel like the economy is going to do, where you think it is right now, where you think it might be in six months or a year or two years after an election. And if you have any kind of tips or strategies you want to share with the rest of the audience on how to get through these patches, I would love for you to put it down in the comments section as well. Let's jump into a couple of the little stories. I'll do it on green screen and you guys will see what I'm talking about. Okay, so first thing we're going to look at is the official United States uh, credit card debt hitting $1 trillion story from the American Bankruptcy Institute, ABI. And it officially joins the ranks of student loans and auto loans. So only student loans and auto loans, credit card debt is the next one that crosses $1 trillion. This country is $1 trillion in credit card debt. And that's data from the Federal Reserve indicating that crossing the trillion dollar mark uh, marks the highest mark since the last recession and a 6.2% increase from last year. 6% increase in credit card debt is a lot. Imagine if you had a $10,000 credit card, um, 10% is 1,000, so 6% is $600. You added $600 on for every you know $10,000 that you had in credit card debt. So then you would multiply that exponentially. You can figure out how much we added. This milestone for credit card debt makes many implications a big change in the economy. More credit card debt indicates that larger purchases such as a home are being put off in lieu of borrowing for different items. You're not putting a house on a credit card, right? So it makes sense. Mortgages hold a smaller stake in overall debt, even though mortgages are a much larger market. While some economists express concern over auto lending to high-risk bar borrowers, as well as people defaulting on student loan, credit card debt remains solid, which is crazy. Having crossed that $1 trillion mark, some economists can't help but wonder how long this momentum of debt can keep going. As interest rates rise, which they do, 
uh, so does the risk of accumulating debt. Rising interest rates could put many borrowers in a tight spot later on. Missed payments on consumer loans is fairly close to record lows. However, credit card payments seem to be on the rise as well as in subprime, subprime auto loans and personal loans. Add to this, many credit cards operate on variable interest rates. It's not hard to see how this could be a problem for the economy later on. And so that's kind of one point I wanted to make. People are okay right now. They're spend happy. They're making their payments. But in three months, six months, nine months, this could creep up and really attack people. If the rates rise, they get used to a minimum amount of payments. They get used to this, that. It could be really bad. We jump over to... Uh, the CNBC window on three reasons, guys, I don't pick news sites either based on my politics or anything. I just picked the best site for the news story of the day. Uh, CNBC's three reasons that a strong uh, Black Friday weekend may not mean a blowout holiday season for the retailers. So this week, or rather last week, Black Friday, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday, were record highs. But that doesn't mean people are going to keep spending. People wanted to get in those deals, right? So as we read this, Online spending shot up by nearly 8% year over year to $38 billion. I did a video on this back in the pandemic times that how much online spending was going to jump and it could be as much as $50 billion by 2024. They're at $38 billion. That means next year, which was the estimate for $50 billion, we had a little cooling. We'll probably see $45 billion. So it's pretty close, pretty close to the estimate we put in that video um, during the five-day period from Thanksgiving Day to Cyber Monday. According to Adobe Analytics, a record high of 200.4 million shoppers went to retailer stores and websites over the same period. Uh, that's from Ulta, that's from Foot Locker, that's from a lot of stores that did a lot of sales this past week. So pretty cool. But if we scroll down, right, the industry's major trade group predicting a 3 to 4% year-over-year growth. So if anybody tells you online shopping is dead, they're wrong. It's not dead. Um, and that's from November 1 to December 31st. As we scroll down, we see that shoppers flock online. We know that. Uh, consumers spent $109.3 billion from November 1st through Cyber Monday this year, according to Adobe Analytics, which is a 7.3% jump compared to last year. So over 7% increase from last year. So sales were definitely up. It's an even sharper jump from the pre-pandemic 2019, where consum consumers spent $81.5 billion. That's probably a 20% jump, a 30% jump, darn near. So... That's huge, right? As we scroll down, though, it's people having a hunger for a deal, which we just talked about. They want the best deal. Well-timed cold snap. People went online and shopped. There's a lot of storms. I guess that played a part of people going online. Definitely part of it, right? But when we come up here, there is a little bit of customers using credit cards to pay for all these Black Friday deals, which is absolutely what I'm scared of. This is what I fear. Here we go. He said higher credit card balances, increased cost of borrowing, and the risk that the U.S. Federal Reserve may keep raising interest rates to flight inflation could spur a downturn. People are just tapped out. But with the holiday season, people are willing to even further extend themselves. Reality may also hit as consumers must pay off those holiday purchases. Swipe, swipe, swipe. So easy, but you got to pay it. Americans are financing purchases in new ways, along with swiping credit cards and debit cards. Used to buy now, pay now later, hit all-time highs on, sober, on Cyber Monday. It contributed $940 million in online spending, a nearly 43% jump year over year. So almost 50% of that spending, or of the current spending on credit cards, it went up. Almost 50%, 43, but close enough. Shoppers who use the payment option also put more items in their cart as the number of purchased items rose 11%. Well, when you're not paying for it right now, you're willing to buy more items, right? Makes perfect sense. Taking on credit card debt this season will come at a steeper price as the interest rates have gone up month over month. So you have to be careful if you're using these credit cards, right? Use them wisely. Late car payments hit the highest peak since 1990s. As the borrowers shoulder heavy loan rates, here's what you can do. So we move over to car rates, right? All this makes a story of this country's economy in a bad, bad, bad position. We look at June of 2023. That's just July, August, September, October, November, December. Six months ago, right? Prime delinquencies and subprime delinquencies. It was 0.25% and 5.01% in June 2023 that were delinquent. 6.1 and 6 point, or 0.27, giving us a total of 6.38% of loans are, of car loans are more than 60 days late. More than 6%, almost 7%, 6.5%, okay? When we scroll down, 
we can see these low credit scores. So people with a 600 to 660, the average new car loan rate is 8.99% and the used car is 1349 A 660 credit score is not horrible. For somebody that's new with credit, young, somebody that doesn't have a ton of credit that's rebuilding, a 650, 660, 670, it's average. It's okay. It's not great, right? It's, it's, it, it's not bad. If you're under 600, you're bad, right? That that 600 to 660, if you're 601, that's probably not good. If you're a 661 though, that's not bad. I mean, there, there's far worse, right? But you're paying n- almost 9% or almost 13.5% for a used car loan. That's insane. 13.5%. If you're a 661 to a 780, so this is a really good credit score in the middle here. You could be like a 720, 730. You're paying six, almost 6.5% six for a new car, 9%. You could have a 700 credit score, 725, and be averaging 9% or more for a, or for a used car, rather. That's crazy. I am so thankful that I bought my cars two years ago and a year ago because these interest rates are bonkers. My, both of my cars were used. I don't buy brand new cars. It's dumb. I buy them a year old or two years old with like 10,000 miles on them, 5,000, 10,000 miles because you save half the price. My interest rates on my two cars right now are three and a half and four and a half. On used cars, and at the time that I bought both of those, I don't care if you guys know, my credit probably hovers in the mid like 750 to 770 range, usually like 765, 770. I usually hang out in that area. I could hit 800, but there's a reason I don't hit 800. Um, I don't care if you guys know, I carry uh, business uh, credit cards that I'm also personally guaranteed on. So they appear on both my credit reports. And so I'm constantly floating that money around in circles. And so if I just pay that off and just left that at zero, my credit, like I've done it a few times, my credit shoots up to like 805, 810. So um, that's the only reason why I, it doesn't matter to me. I, at 770, I get whatever I need finance. They usually won't turn you down and get the best rates. But three and a half, four and a half percent, I am in love with that. I want to keep my cars for a while. Same story with this house and what people are paying. You're going to see in a second. Um, So they give you some strategies to fall behind. If you fall behind on your car payments about payment options, refinancing, selling it is always a good option to get into a cheaper car. Consider a side hustle, part-time job, great option. Uh, Delivering, dog walking, whatever you have to do. And if you are forced with getting your car repossessed, call the bank and turn it in voluntarily. Work out a deal where they'll send you a bill for the balance of what you owe if you're behind or underwater on it. And then they'll take the car and that will hurt your credit uh, less than if you get an actual repossession. So that's actually true. Um, We move over to the foreclosure. This is the last one I think I'm going to show you guys. We're going to move over to foreclosure here. U.S. foreclosure activity, and this is on houses, and the rental is worse. I already looked up the rental eviction rates. It's terrible. Uh, Show the continued rise in third quarter approaching levels seen before the pandemic. So this graph actually goes all the way back to 2005. You see the the maximum here, 2008, 2009. That's this big spike where like close to a million, you know, 950,000 houses were taken. And then it just dropped all the way to record lows in 2020 because they weren't getting people kicked out of their house during the pandemic. But as the pandemic raged on and it started to come to an end here in 21, 22, you see it start creeping back up over that 100,000 mark. And now we are... In quarter three of this year, 2023, we're up over 100,000. You'll see that in a minute. 100,546 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings. 100,000 people getting foreclosed on. That's up 3% from the previous quarter, second quarter of this year, up 9% from a year ago. That's crazy. There's also 36,000 properties with foreclosure filings in September, which was up 8% and 15% from last year. You guys can see these numbers again, spikes at 08, 09, drops back down and pandemic, nobody's getting kicked out. And then it rises as people get kicked out. And now we're here. Could we see it go up over 100, 150,000? Who knows? We'll have to wait and see. I believe it will. Uh, It then gives us the states with the lowest and highest rates. The highest rates are New Jersey, Maryland, and Nevada. Nevada's always at the top. Delaware's high, South Carolina's high. Maryland being up there is not surprising. They're, they're, uh, I'm from Maryland originally. They're Washington, D.C., Northern Virginia, Southern Maryland, Prince George's County. That area is very expensive. Senators live there. Congress people live there. Lawyers live there. A lot of, a lot of government people live there. Um, now Amazon's there, I believe. And if we scroll down here, states with the longest foreclosure time are Louisiana, Hawaii, Nevada, New York, and New Jersey. Time it takes to kick you out. Uh, I'd scroll down to see where my state is at Florida. 
Um, 932 properties, 10,000 properties with, uh, or one for every 10,000 properties. Uh, the percentage from quarter two is actually down here in Florida, but the percentage of quarter three from last year is up 12.89%. The District of Columbia is up the highest, 453%. Um, they're, they're just crazy. DC is expensive, just like I just said. It's, it's ridiculously expensive, and they have a lot of bad stuff. Also really high, North Dakota, which is random. South Dakota, which is probably random. Maryland, very high. Massachusetts, very high. Kentucky's pretty high. Um, Idaho, pretty high. It's just everybody losing their house, losing their cars, losing their credit card, you know, to their credit scores to credit card debt. It's just a lot, guys. It's a lot right now all at one time. And so I'm going to wrap the video up. I think the point of my video here is that this country has been on a trajectory to downturn for a while now. I'm surprised it's lasted this long. People are charging a lot on credit cards that have higher interest rates costing us a lot of money. People are paying more for cars because the interest rates are higher. People are paying more for houses because the interest rates are higher. Your gasoline costs more for the longest time. Our electric bills are up, our water bills are up, our groceries are up, everything is up. And I read an interesting stat, it wasn't on those, that the cost of living across this country is costing people between nine and 11% more on every $100 they spend is costing an extra nine to $11. So if your bills every month were $1,000, it's costing you like an extra 100 bucks. If your bills are 5,000, it's costing you an extra $500 a month to live. And the amount of income increase has been like 3%. So it's 7% net increase. You're, you're making 3% more, but it's costing you 10% more. And that can't keep up. People can't keep making less money or making the same money and having to spend more and more and more and more month after month after month, especially with all these interest rates and all these costs. The cost of the car is more. The interest rate is more. The house costs more. The interest rate costs more. The credit card debt costs more. The items you're buying cost more at the grocery store, wherever you're using the credit card. And it's just, it's not keeping up. It's not sustainable. And when it's not sustainable and it can't keep up, it crashes. The rug gets pulled out and a lot of people lose a lot of things. And I'm very, very scared for this country. And I'm scared for a lot of people who are in a bad situation, who don't have a way to make extra money and to make sure you pay those bills. I am currently working on stacking up money. I've been saying it to you guys for probably every bit of six to 12 months. Um, I am hoarding money. I am stuffing it in, in shelves. I'm stuffing it in safes. I'm stuffing it in bank accounts. I just do everything you can to find a way to liquidate uh, inventory to make profits. Um, if you have a good source of inventory that you can buy and keep flipping, do it, buy it cheap, offer low money. As the economy gets worse, people are going to keep going down on their prices. Stand firm, buy what you can very, very cheaply and sell it and make the most profit out of everything that you can. That's your best option right now. Buy, buy, buy cheap, sell, sell, sell as high as you possibly can and just don't get stuck with a ton of inventory. Don't overkill yourself. All right. Is that it? I think I covered everything. I did. I, I think so. Anyways, I'll leave it to you guys. Comment sections. I would love to read what you have to say about it. I know the video was long. I apologize, but I wanted to get all this off my chest and uh, give you guys just kind of a heads up and let you know where this country is right now. No fear mongering, sky not falling, but we've seen a few pebbles start falling out of the sky, a couple of raindrops. And I fear that the sky, although it's not going to fall on us, I fear that we're going to have a huge rain and a huge storm come through. So We'll see what happens. We'll see if I'm right. I'll refer to this video in six to 12 months. And uh, in the meantime, I'll read your comments, respond to them, and appreciate you taking the time to leave them. Hit that like button, guys. Subscribe to the channel. And I will see everyone 